Welcome back, everyone. We're live into the Facebook community, and we're back with Eric. What's up, Eric? How's it going, everybody? How are you, buddy? Staying busy. Going well. It's a good day, man. It's a nice day. Where are you out in Scottsdale or no? no I'm in, I'm west of Phoenix. Just uh, that's that's where I'm at. So in the Phoenix area. Got it. Got it. All right. So if you need to buy a home, don't forget to ask us, and we'll get you up with a good <laughs> referral out there. Perfect. <laughs> I got my co-host Mark. What's up, Mark? What's up, everyone? How are we doing? How are we doing, Eric? How's your uh, How's the Chime House treating you? That's great. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> nice dude it's nice all right guys today we're going to be talking about the chime app and it's one thing that our team loves and we use it daily and eric's going to show us the ins and outs of this if you're not ready for this it's kind of like watching a youtube video live because eric is so damn good (laughs) with with his arrows and and the boxes he makes so eric take it away buddy great I will uh, attempt to do the, my best with those arrows. They're setting a high standard here. I'm going to have to. Dude, really you're do the one setting now. the standards, bro, not us. <laughs> That's why they keep me around. I'm saying it's, it's all about those red arrows. So good. All right. You should be seeing, the, you should be seeing my app now. Is that, is that what you're on your, got on your screen? Very, see, very, very clear. Very clear. All right. So this, uh, the features we were going to cover today, obviously, this is part two, everyone. So we're going to go over some of the features we didn't get to last time. And uh, right now we're, we're just taking a look at the, the features uh, that we left off on were the open house tool, the door knocking feature, property alerts, and then reporting. So got it. we'll kind of go in that order and address some questions. Hopefully we'll have some time to get to those as well. I think there were other, a few other things on my list that I wanted to go over, but that should, those are some of the key features we didn't get to. So let's talk about the open house feature. Um, everybody knows that you can, you're, when you're open, hosting an open house, you want to be able to capture the information in the moment, right? Uh, we've made it so that you can use the Chime mobile app to just do so on your phone, handing over your phone and allowing for that to, uh, for them to sign in directly on your phone. Now, to do that, it's as simple as hitting that, uh, the menu in the top left up here. So I'll highlight that with my red box. There you go. <laughs> and uh, you've got the open house tool right there for you to access. Dude. So when I when I hit open house, uh, this allows for me to either choose from any existing open house forms I have created on the web app, if I've done so already, or I can actually create one here by clicking on the plus button in the top right, choosing an address, and then picking from those available in my MLS. It will pull in their images automatically and allow for you to do so on the go. So this is the same setup process you'd see using our web app on your computer, right? Mm, yes. Um, but right now we've got, I think this one is a valid one. A is an open house form. You click on that, it opens up. Yeah, this one. Oh, you know what this is? I need to update my app because we just had an update that went live today for the open house app. I failed to update my, my app, funny enough. Um, you all want to do that because what this is, the, the open house app um, or the open house tool on the app now has a QR code feature as well. So you can actually click on the open house form right here, and it will open up either for you to fill out the form right on your phone, or you can have a QR code that someone with their phone can just scan right on yours, fill it out without having to use your device. Oh, dude. I so love that. that just went live today. And uh, in order to use the open house form, you have to update the app. So I, I failed to do that, guys. But don't don't make the same mistake as me. Update your app as soon as possible. Um, Mark. Update that damn thing right I'm now. I'm actually oh, make it happen. I'm, I'm trying to do this right now. Give me a second. I'm updating mine too, dude. Yeah. So uh, make sure you update the app. That should that should make it uh, nice and quick for you. I could probably might be able to do that on the fly here. But for anyone that's used our open house tool, um, I, at least for the, the purpose of demonstrating how this works, I can probably pull up a demo account just as a sample. Okay. And when I go into our open house tool on our campaigns page. Let's see, update went live today. So open house forms, it's gonna look like this essentially. So just just so you have the context, uh, without updating my app, I'll just give you this as an example. It's going to allow for you to either have them scan that QR code or they can fill out the form. It'll just be mobile friendly format of this, okay? 
Got so it. nice and ready for you to use right uh, right out of the system. Okay. So yeah, I uh, didn't update my app, but that's the open house tool. The any the good thing about an op the open house tool for those of you that don't know, when someone registers on this this uh, form, it will take them directly to uh, it'll it'll add them right to your database. Right, there's no data entry layer that you have to do moving them from a piece of paper into your computer or or a spreadsheet or whatever you've collected that data. You can have them right in your CRM. Um, the open house tool is also quite powerful because it will add them as the source open house. So you can track where they came from and it will tag them with the address. So if you wanted to easily find someone that registered at a specific open house, you'll know that by searching your database for the tag. So that first portion of the address there will be added to your lead as a tag. You just find that in your, in your people page and you can trigger out content to them. As oh. a matter of fact, yeah, go ahead. Dude, so every single person that goes to the open house is tagged with that address. So you could just right. blast out whatever you need to. Yeah. And then so you can you can do that with automation as well. I mean, so you can do it manually, but you could also set up a smart plan. So you could do a smart plan to trigger based off of that tag. And that gives you the ability to send out maybe a, a PDF attachment with more information on the property. Uh, you could send out a, a put them on a specific campaign to, to get them to engage with you after that open house. Really uh, sky's the limit on that one. I mean, look, let me just jump in here and say another script for everyone could be, hey, first name, uh, would you like to see any open houses this weekend? And then you can start giving them these links and track what they're looking at, track what they want to see. It's, that's fantastic. That's really cool. Yeah. So the uh, open house tool is definitely one of our, our favorites. Now, just a quick bonus piece of uh, information. Uh, the, many people don't know that we have a tablet app as well, specifically for the open house feature. So oh. I think it's worth mentioning because it's still part of the mobile conversation, right? Um, yeah. I will pull up just our help article. You're welcome to check this out later for anyone that's interested. But we have in our help center the information on what this looks like. You can find this in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store for your tablet devices. And please note, this is just this is not the CRM. This is just for the open house feature. Um, this is dedicated for that purpose. It really makes it easy for you to capture your open house data. I mean, tablets are so common at an open house. And why you'd want to use a tablet app is that it can actually work offline. Now, you're, if you're using a computer, if you're using your phone, you've got to have an internet connection, which sometimes there's a rural property or something that you might not have a good enough data plan to cover and give you the, uh, the connection to open that form. With the tablet app, you can capture that offline. Once you have the connection, it syncs up to the, to the, the cloud, right? So the tablet app is certainly something I would check out. The QR code feature that I just mentioned is not yet live on the tablet app. That's expected next month. But other than that, you can still use these open house forms on the tablet apps. So check that out. Ooh. Dude, that's really good. I, I was I was going to talk to Mark there. Mark, you know, we have this. Um, I don't even know where it is in our office, but we have a tablet stand. So what, really? We can, <laughs> yeah, we, we do. <laughs> We could plug in the iPad in there and then just put it at the front of the open houses, too. That's cool. Yeah, I'd be yeah. perfect for it. So lots of ways to do that. And soon it'll have the QR code as well uh, that you could just even have the tablet there. If someone wants to fill out the form there, they can do so or they can just scan it on their phone. Nice and simple. So check that out. The, the QR code feature just went live today. There's new product release notes for anyone that maybe didn't see the email that they should have received. Uh, should have received. And uh, we're excited about that one. So. That's the open house tool. Um, That's awesome. Door knocking dude. feature is next on the list, I think. So let's talk about the door knocking feature. All right. So the door knocking feature, you're going to find that by going to your uh, your people page. So you're going to click on the people icon there on the bottom menu. And okay. there is the option to door knock right there. So when I click on door knock, what this is intended for you to do is essentially capture what we call partial leads. So a partial lead is really address only. You're, you're just keeping track of that, that address, that location, and making some notes on what, what happened at that location. You can come back in later, add, add them as a lead in your database. So if I were to click on the door knock option, it's going to take me to my location on the map, and it's going to let me actually zoom in um, to wherever I'm at, and I can simply uh, click on a specific location. So let me just click on one of these homes here. Mm -hmm. There it goes. 
And uh, the, the map data that we have allows for us to find an address for that specific location. So nice, dude. we what do you, grab that. Eric, yeah. What do you overlay on on the tech side? Do you overlay on Google Maps or app? Oh, never mind. I see Apple Maps there. Yep. What um, what other company? I might be using my phone's app. I think that might be what it's using in this case, actually. Oh, got it. What to, on the tech side? What do you? Where do you guys grab all that info from? Do you know? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I know we use a combination of Google Maps and a, and another map provider, if I'm not mistaken. So Got there's it. there's quite a few out there, but uh, certainly the, the data is up to par with what you find on Google. Dude, cool. it looks awesome. This is awesome. This will follow us along everywhere when we're door knocking. So yeah, Mark, when we're going in and we're having an open house and we door knock 10 in front. 10 to the left, 10 to the right. Right, right. There you yeah. go. This is perfect, man. Yes. So now, really now we've used... We've used the app in two scenarios at the open house. One, pre-open house when we're door knocking. Two, at the open, at house. The open house, especially when the scanner's on, bro. When you when you yep. turn on the QR scan code, psh, done. Game yeah, over. Love yep. this. <laughs> All good stuff, right? So the, uh, really yeah, the, just so you can kind of see what this process looks like. If I click on add door knock, what that does is it takes you to a page where you can then add in your notes. Um, it, it saves that location, that address, uh -huh. and then um, you are able to assign it to someone if you want to. And then that note field is going to be super important for you right here. That will transition so that you will, later on your computer can come in, use those notes to add it as a regular lead in your database. So um, just as an example here, this is where they will come. Anyone that is captured on that mobile app uh, door knocking feature, they'll be in your partial leads section right here. Everybody has this on their people page on their CRM. And when they go here, they'll be able to see those notes. So this allows for you to have those notes synchronized right to your computer. I can then come in and search for owners using uh, uh, white pages data that we have synchronized to our platform. You can grab that for 30 cents if it's available, or you can just add it as a lead manually. Maybe you've talked to them, got their name, uh, and you, you put in their information here. So that is allows for you to go quick from address right to a full lead in your database that you can then uh, work with whatever platform, whatever nurturing options you have. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's awesome. So that's the uh, the door knock feature. Um, definitely something that's pretty unique and not available anywhere but the mobile app, of course, um, and gives you a good idea of what's happening as far as uh, marking that territory in your area and kind of owning that with uh, door knocking. Right. I love that. Awesome. Too. It's very powerful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So those are the first two features. I want to make sure we get through the other ones. Uh, property alerts. Let's talk about property alerts. So if I go into one of these leads, let's go into Daniel Chime here. And we're going to see that we have all the information available for that lead, of course. And where I'm going to find this new, uh, the, the property alerts feature, this wasn't always available on the mobile app, but you're on the go. You're talking to someone. They've given you their specific criteria for what kind of properties they like. You wanna be able to do that from the palm of your hand, right? Without mm -hmm. having to go back to your computer and add it later and, and remember those details. Yeah. So what you can do is you can click on this uh, plus icon here in the bottom right. And there is an option to add an alert right here. So that add an alert option, if I click there, lets me choose between either the market, the, the market snapshot or the property alert. Uh, property alert being new properties that match your criteria for as a buyer, right? And a market snapshot, for those that don't know, is for seller audience more than anything. It gives you a, a snapshot from a 30-day period last month to the current date, kind of how the market's been changing. So that is available for the sellers. So I'll choose property alert. And it takes me to the page where I have the ability to choose a location. I can choose uh, basically all the fields that I have on my web app I will have available here. Uh, that I can choose to set the criteria, price ranges, locations, et cetera. And when I, when I create that, I, I uh, will click on the next option there on the top right. Mm -hmm. I can name my property alert if I want to. These, this is the same things you'd see online if you're under the engagement tab. Nice, you nice. can uh, choose your subject for the email, et cetera. And then you click on save. Simple as that. You save your property alert. So this allows for you to go through on the go, you add the criteria when you're talking to someone on the move and you can tell them they'll be getting an alert 
uh, immediately because that's one of the options, or you can put them on a specific schedule. That's great. So I love this. Really keeps everything. And, and right there is actually the alert I just created. You can see it's under the engagement tab. So I can double check that as well. Mark, did you know this, bro? No, no. Honestly, this is a, this is a, this webinar is for me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did, I, I designed it especially for you. Yep. Oh, so, that's so good. I kind yep. of feel like it's kind of for me too, a little bit. <laughs> not, I'm not as bad as Mark, but you know. There's, there's a lot to there's a lot to the Chime platform and and some of it's certainly underutilized on on the mobile app for sure. So, dude, this is good. This Mark, yeah. this needs to be for like all the agents on our team. I'm pretty sure they don't know this. I'm pretty sure as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now I've, let it be known we can do property alerts on the mobile app. So, and look, if a, our edit, uh, dude, if our editing team is watching this, which they are, why don't we dice up every little section? that eric is talking about as a separate little video because so far he's talked about three things right we've got the open house app we've got the door knocking app and now the property one i think those would make great short excerpts guys just just a side note eric sorry no i think i think they did that in the last video and so i think that it's a it is a good way to have that available for future reference um uh, real quick eric uh, is there an yeah. option to send uh, property uh, text alerts not yet. Um, no, we can't currently send out a property alert via text. Okay. Though we that that's certainly being considered. I will mention that. Um, awesome. We don't have a timeline on that, but we are we are looking into the, the feasibility of doing that. Well, thank you, Gary, for the good question. Yep. You're hired, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the reporting page. You know, I I need to probably grab a new demo account to get into the reporting page because the one I have doesn't have old data that's going to give you any reporting feedback but um so i might do that here while we're on the call but the the reporting data the reporting obviously you're, you're not going to do a lot of that on the move it's not designed for you to have a robust reporting experience but you might want to have an idea of what's going on with your lead database um, or kind of just see what new leads are coming in from what sources you're on the go and you just want to kind of see how your team is performing that's kind of what is designed here so most of the data that you're going to find on our web app is going to be on the mobile app as well. So if you want to access our reports, I think we briefly mentioned this last time, but I, th I think we'll highlight this again just for fun. Here in the bottom right, we have the activity page. Um, when we click there, this is going to tell you actually what's going on in your database for your leads, right? They're opening mm -hmm. property alert emails. They're opening, they're performing certain searches. Uh, yep. From a lead reporting perspective, this is super important. I can see that someone just performed a search or just opened an email. I'm on the move, I'm between appointments, I can make a quick phone call to that person or shoot them a quick message. A lot of ways to use this activities page on that front. Um, but that's more from the lead reporting side of things. Now, if I want to get to the other reporting page, uh, I'll go back to my dashboard. So I'm clicking down here on the bell icon and up in the top right, we have a this reporting option right there. So this is what we're talking about. You click on reporting and it's gonna let you have all of this data. And as I mentioned, I'm using a, mm -hmm. a dummy account that doesn't have actual phone calls and things in here. So I can't show you some of those graphs and what they look like, but you can see that I can choose at the very top, right? The, this is going to be the time frame you're looking at. So if I choose this week, it'll let me choose either a custom range, or I can choose a specific one from this uh, list here. And so that will be reflected in the reports. I can also just hit this top menu um, to choose a specific person I want to report on. So if I'm, I want to take a look at a specific member of my team, it's just going to be a matter of hitting there and you have your agents listed here. So I can just check one of these and it will give me the reporting for all of them. Or I can just go back to the all members option there at the top. Yeah, Eric, I do so, have a question. Let's say, for yeah. example, uh, you can't get a hold of the lead through the chime texting or the chime calling but they respond to you via your personal cell phone right um mm -hmm. does any leave notes saying contacted or whatever it won't show up here will it if you've made they, they've been communicating to you or you've been communicating to them tell me what's the scenario I, I, either way but not through not through the chime app like through your actual like i messaging for example yeah so if they're if they are messaging your cell phone number directly um, through your messaging app, right? Then it's not going to synchronize to Chime, no. Sure, the only way okay. it's going to synchronize to Chime is if you're, they're messaging your virtual number on the Chime platform because otherwise we don't know about it. 
Right. What does what does happen and what we briefly covered last time was the logic that that occurs when you send a text message to someone or make a phone call. You can choose via the Chime platform if you want to use your virtual number or your your personal device right. phone number, right? And if you use your device number, it will allow for you to populate um, a log. It should automatically create a log for you that you can save right on the CRM. So the outgoing call or text that can synchronize to the system. Right. It'll at least log that you perform that action. But the, um, the content, you're not gonna get a call recorded and you're not going to get the actual content of the text message unless you copied and pasted it. Sure, of course. Right, 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 right. Because uh, would be maybe kind of cool to add um, like a, a tag that says like contacted or something. Because I do, I do know from experience that sometimes um, some of the leads will respond to like an iMessage because they're more comfortable with, oh, like I'm not an iPhone user or for whatever reason. So it could be mm -hmm. kind of cool just so that we're not losing out on um, the, the percentage of the reporting, possibly, just an idea. Yeah, um, I mean, certainly you can manually log those phone calls and that's going to count in your reporting. Right. So oh, I, think oh, okay. in the scenario, okay. I think in the scenario you're describing, you're gonna to wanna to do a manual log um, sure. and, and you can do that by going into a lead record. Uh, let's just do that now, go back into Daniel. And I can click on the uh, plus option there in the bottom right. And I can yeah. add a note or a log. So if I clicked on add a note or a log, it's going to let me choose. Is it a call, email, text, or just a note? Um, and if it's one of those types, call or text, it'll count towards your calling and texting uh, metrics. Okay. Yep. Good question. So certainly there's ways to, to, to still document that. It's just a little bit more of a manual effort for sure. You have to intentionally go in mm -hmm. and make that, that record. And that happens quite often, so it's okay. We support that. But as you can see, here's the reporting data you're going to have on the mobile app. You're going to have access to the number of leads that are coming in on the, the daily basis, the total number that have come been entering your system from specific sources, um, the number of contacted. You've got a sales funnel um, by, by users, members, or by source. You have the lead score, uh, average response time, tasks, et cetera. So... This is kind of the reporting data you're going to have on the move. As I mentioned, it's not meant to really replace everything you'd have on the web app, but it's going to give you a good glimpse as to what your team is doing on the move. Cool. Like so that, that is the, yeah, that's the reporting page. A lot of, a lot of uh, ways to, to use that as when you're on the go to kind of manage your team and, and the check contacts being happening, happening. It's, it's a, uh, not as detailed as you find on, on the web app, but you have it. So those were the ones that I think we had outstanding on our list to cover today. Um, let me just review my list, see if there's anything that I'm missing. Anything you guys would like to add to that? I have a question. What's, yeah. what, are you, what are you guys working on next that we should be excited about when it comes to the app? Mm. Mm -hmm. Let me think off the top of my head if I could say anything on the these features. I know we're working on making uh, team collaboration a little bit easier to access um, and um, having, this is actually something that we are, we, we're, we're currently working on for the web app as well, kind of a um, workspace feature for lack of a better term. So you're able to communicate and, and share communication incoming to your system in one spot and, and build kind of a workspace among specific uh, users on our platform. And that's gonna be reflected on the mobile app as well. Uh, nice. we're, we're also looking to do some UI improvement. So in, improve just the overall user experience so that it's easier to use the app. It's always updates that need to be made to make it so that you can find what you would prioritize. So similar to what you find on the web app today, the quick action menu. So if I were to pull up my demo account again, and I go to a lead record, then I'm talking about this menu right here where I can easily create an, an appointment or send an email, et cetera perform these very quick actions, we're gonna work on making this more accessible, all of these features on the mobile app. So that is definitely part of the experience as well. These are the most common actions you take for a lead. And we wanna make those front and center on the mobile app as well. Eric, what about, so, um, what about the possible ability to send voicemails through the mobile app? Um, not something that I could say is on the roadmap off the top of my head. Um, and I just want to understand what you're asking when you say that. The, so you want to do like a, a voicemail drop, like a ringless voicemail, or you want like a, uh, a slide broadcast type of thing? Or what type of voicemail? 
Adam Frank, do you want to want to let us know? <laughs> There's a question from Adam. Slide broadcast. Uh, slide broadcast. All right. Yeah, yeah. So um, that would require that might be a little more of a robust uh, future initiative. I'm not aware of any short term plans to address that because it would depend on that slide broadcast functionality. Getting that in the mobile app is not as easy as getting it into the web app as far as integrations are concerned. So something we can explore in the future, but not on the roadmap right now. OK. And then uh, Gary wants to know uh, how, how often slash frequently um, hours uh, days does this chime update with the MLS their communication together yeah the MLS update syncing from the MLS uh, to, to chime is going to be on average every 15 to 30 minutes it will depend uh -huh. on the MLS though so you each MLS will have limits to how often they let you pull the data and we have to follow those limits but we will typically on our end pull that data every 15 minutes on average cool. awesome yeah Thank great you, questions good. yep well, I, there's there's a, a lot to the mobile app. I think we've covered most of it already. Um, unless there's any other questions, that's kind of the content I have for today. More more improvements to come on this front for sure. I would just recommend that everybody ensure they've got their push notifications enabled, uh, that they are they, they've got that set up so that they can see those for the purpose of accepting leads that are being assigned to them, and that that's a, a very important piece of that. And then once you have that set up and you want to do all your communication in one spot, there's a great way to do that right on the mobile app as well. Um, we didn't even dive into the AI assistant on the mobile app, but you can also have, there's a lot of actions you can take on the mobile app to tell the AI assistant to perform a specific objective. That's a, an update you'll want to look in the notes for today as well. I'm not going to have it on my app because it's not updated yet, but the AI assistant is a big piece of the mobile app as well and, and what we want to have available here. Dude, that's what I look at on a daily basis. Like the AI yeah. assistant. Yeah. Uh, Eric, lots, you're talking about happening. you're we're gonna talk about the CMA the next round, right? The next round. That's we're right. Gonna yeah, that. we're gonna we're gonna talk about our CMA tool next time. That's pretty cool too. You've seen that. Dude, we want to have you on like it. every other webinar, man. It just feels <laughs> like we learned so much from you. You'll get <laughs> sick of me quick, but uh glad to help where I can. Dude, I'm loving it. Thanks for jumping on, everyone. Thanks for joining. Mark, thanks for being here, everybody. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks, Eric. everyone. We love you, bro. Thanks for being on, man. Thanks, thanks guys. Have a good one.